everyone, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, I wanted to do my first timers report on my experience doing the 2022 Princess Ren Disney weekend. It was my first like official race in general and it was definitely my first Ren Disney race. So I wanted to kind of give my first timer experience what's it's, what it's like running as a brand new person to run Disney. I've seen so many videos on YouTube and I've watched so many um, of people who've run like a million run Disney races and know all the tips and tricks. But I think it might be interesting to hear someone's point of view who ran it for the very first time and didn't know a lot before. Um, so that's what I wanted to do today. If you haven't already, I want you to please watch my vlog of the Run Disney Weekend. Um, I will link it in the description below. And that was my full vlog. So it covered the expo, the five, the 10, and the half. But I didn't really give my thoughts on how I felt, how everything went um, after the fact. So that's what this video is. So I first wanna briefly say like, how did I even sign up for this race? Like what even prompted me to be like, I'm gonna run a half marathon. Um, so if you don't know, I am a dancer and I have been since I was three. So physical activity has always come pretty naturally to me. I've always been very into physical activity um, in dance, um, but it wasn't until really the pandemic where I started cross training. Working out just didn't really exist to me um, until the pandemic. And I was still dancing, of course, but I also just like wanted to do something else and like wanted to cross train because, you know, cross training makes you a better dancer. So I started cross training, but still not running, like by any means. Um, I've always hated running. I've like done it every once in a while, then like, I'm gonna start to be a runner and I just always fail. I don't always fail, but I always, um, cause failing's not a good word. I always uh, choose to quit. And I just don't, I just never enjoyed it. I never, never liked it. Um, but after I started cross training, which I cross trained with The Limit, they're the best, best ever. I will also link them in the description below if you're looking for a great community. It's literally the best. I could do a whole other video about how much I love The Limit. Um, but because of that, I felt myself getting so strong and a lot of um, the com community members in there are runners. And it just was really inspiring. And I was like, I can run, like I, I can do this. So my first run ever was I had just um, moved to New York, kind of, I was subletting first. Um, and I was, I was subletting, subletting an apartment that was right on the water. So that's a very popular area to run. And it was like the week before registration for the princess half was opening. And I was like, I'm going to go for a run. And I think I ran for like three miles and it was not a good run because I just like didn't know how to pace myself. I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't realize that there was like a way to run. Like you didn't, also, I obviously live in New York, so if you hear a lot of sirens, I apologize. I remember doing that and like feeling like it was super hard, but afterwards, how accomplished you feel. Like that runner's high, it's real. It really is real. And I remember just feeling so like I can do anything. Like I can climb Mount Everest now. So I signed up the next week and funny story, I actually signed up for the five and the 10. So Princess Weekend, a little bit of backstory, is five, a 10 and a half. So a 5K, which is 3.1 miles, 10K, 6.2 and a half, 13.1. I was going to just do the five and the 10. That was what I was gonna do, it was my first race. So I signed up for those on registration day. A few days passed by and I'm kind of thinking about it and I'm thinking, 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 and I'm just like, I'm the type of person who if I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it 150%. Um, that's the dancer in me. So I remember thinking like, I'm not gonna go to this run Disney weekend and only do the five and the half, five, five and the 10, and then have all these people run the half marathon and I'm just gonna not do it. Like that's not happening. So I logged on my computer and I signed up for the half marathon. And I remember kind of in the moment being like, what am I doing? But we're gonna do it and it's gonna be fine. Um, so that's how I signed up. That's kind of how I got to running. And so this has been like my start as a runner in general. Um, I had done a few like fun runs growing up, but like not seriously, you know, there's those runs that you do, those like five mile, three milers, um, but nothing like, nothing like this. When I was looking into training, I was on the Run Disney website and I saw that they have like actually a Run Disney training plan, which was super helpful. And that's what I followed. Um, what it basically is, is three runs a week, 
The first two of the week are always 30 minutes. I believe it never changes. I think it's always 30. And then the last run is a certain mileage. So it starts pretty small. It starts, with, I think, like two to three in the first few weeks. And then it gets higher. And then it kind of goes back down. And then it gets higher, you know, um, all the way up to 14. I followed that pretty religiously for the first, I would say more than halfway, like probably three quarters of the way. Um, it was January, right after Christmas, and I was going for a run, and I noticed my foot was kind of sore. I feel like I keep saying, like, as a dancer, and I don't want that to sound, like, weird, but just, as a dancer, you're injured a lot. Um, and you deal with injuries a lot, so it was just nothing to me. It's like, I'll put ice on it, I'll be fine. Um, and it just didn't go away, and it was kind of annoying, so I went to the doctor, and, um... I did have to take some time off of running to kind of let it heal. The good part about that is I was allowed to do the elliptical and the bike, which were great because it's still building your cardio, it's still getting your endurance um, up, but you're not putting weight on your feet. So it's great. Win-win. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. And actually the first run back, my pace was like crazy fast for for what I was doing. So sometimes taking time off is the best thing. I probably need to say that a lot to myself and I don't take my own advice. I need to practice what I preach, but sometimes taking time off is the right thing to do. I will be sure to save this clip and replay it for myself when I need to hear this. Future Deirdre, sometimes taking time off is the right thing to do and you need to take time off to let your body heal. I just am gonna tell you now, I'm not gonna listen to that advice probably ever, but it's okay. Anyways, so training ended and I had gotten a few more mileage. I think I got up to like eight miles right before the half. But I think the longest in the training is 14. So it gets higher than the half. And I didn't get to do that. And that's what I'm sad I didn't get to do. Anyways, training ends. Race weekend is here. I was so excited telling everyone like I'm running half marathon in two weeks. I'm so excited. I can't wait. I had all my outfits. I'm so excited. Just yay. I'm so, so excited. Um, not thinking about like the actual like running part, but like getting a medal and afterwards that feeling that you cross the finish line. Like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. And it's Disney. Like, obviously it's going to be fun. So we got there the day before the expo um, started just to kind of like get settled in everything. Um, I was worried about the expo just because I have heard how long the lines are to get in and it just does not look like a fun time. Um, so I actually did do a little bit of research about that and that was the best tip probably all weekend I found that was to, um, what was the tip? To get to the expo between like one and four um, because it's after the initial group kind of goes in and waits in line for a long time but it's before kids get out of school people get out from work locally also if anyone was there you can attest to this the room that you wait in i don't know if it's like this every time or just this random time um it was so like moist in which i'm sorry if people hate that word um but it was it was like really damp and like gross in there right it, was that just me i don't know one thing you're probably thinking is like, well, people get there early because they want to get the good stuff. And yes, I'm sure that's true. But in my experience, like everything was still in stock. I think there might've been like a few random things like pins or something. Um, but I got a lot of pins because um, I do collect pins. I got a lot of pins. My mom got the spirit jersey. Those went really fast, but we were still able to get one. Um, Again, it was our first time there, so I didn't really know what to expect. I got a lot. Oh, I wish I, um, I'm in New York right now and it's all at home. I wish I could show you all what I got. I should have done that. I'll just tell you what I got. Maybe I'll be able to find pictures of it. So I got the zip up, which I love. Oh my gosh, I love it. It's like the blue zip up with all the princesses on the back. I've worn it like pretty much every single day. I love that. Um, then I got the pass holder shirt. It was like hot pink, which I had to get. And then I got um, three pins. I got the pins that are like, they had like a little dangly thing on them that had like an adjective for the princess. So I think it was like courageous for Mulan. I don't remember, but I got all three of those. I got, which I shouldn't have got because I didn't realize you got it for free. Um, but I got a shirt that said like the 
the fairy tale challenge, even though I did technically more than the fairy tale challenge. I didn't realize that you also got a fairy tale challenge shirt um, for doing it. Like you get shirts for doing the race. So you get a 5k shirt. If you do the 5k, you, do, you get a 10k shirt and you get that when you, um, at the expo, you can pick them up. It was crowded and it was a little hectic. I was kind of like, ah, what is happening? They had so much merch. I think I was shocked at just like how much variety they had. Like, I was just not expecting that for some reason. And they had mobile checkout, which was amazing because mobile checkout is like my favorite thing in the whole world. World Mobile checkout, if you haven't tried it, it's only in select stores, but the best. And then we walked out and we went to the other building, which this was my first time at Wide World of Sports. It's so crazy when you can go to Disney so much as we do and go somewhere that you've never been before. And we had literally never been to Wild World of Sports. Um, and I was just the whole time, I kept being like, what, where am I? Like, what is, it is ginormous. Like, I could not believe how big this was. Insane. So the first building, I should have explained this better. The first building was all the merch um, that was specifically run Disney. So no vendors, just like run Disney merch. That was the first building. The next building was that we went to was to pick up your bibs. So you go in, um, you have to sign this form that you had to do online. We didn't do it online because it wasn't working. There was no problem. They just had extra ones. And you go and you say your name and you show them your ID and they find your name and they give you your bib. Um, I had to go to two because I got one that was just the fairy tale challenge and that one had the tracker built in um, and I wore it for the 10 and a half. But then I also had to get a different one for the 5k. So if you're running all three um, for Princess Weekend, you need two different ones. A little confusing because the 5k's do not have trackers built in because you cannot track during the 5k because they don't time you um, during the 5k. It's There's no time limit. The 10 and a half, there are time limits. After we picked up our bibs, we went into the last expo building and that was the vendor expo. So that was like your typical um, race weekend, you know, New York marathon, Philly marathon, um, whatever like you would typically see at a race. So just vendors selling different things. Um, we did go in, we didn't look at like every booth. We did go to the Pandora booth and I did start a Pandora charm um, of I'm gonna start it for all of my run Disney races, which I'm super excited. I love Pandora, I have a few of them. And um, I love starting new ones. I think that's like so fun when you're like starting a brand new one. Um, so they had exclusive charms for the weekend that had the princess um, who was the mascot of the race. And then on the back, it had the mileage. That's also where you picked up your shirts. So you went with your bib and you handed them, you like kind of pulled this little thing off your bib and you handed it to them and they gave you your shirt your complimentary shirt for the races, which are super cute and they're like athletic material. I've already worn one to run in. Um, so I'm super excited for that to like have all, I have four shirts now to run in that are all like run Disney. So that was super fun. So that was the expo. We were in and out in about two hours. It was really not long. We only waited to get into the run Disney merch expo um, hall. And that was about a like 25, 30 minute wait. Um, but there was no wait to get your bib and no wait to get into the vendor expo and get your shirt. That was the expo. It was a lot less stressful than I was expecting. I think I was expecting it to be like insane and it was really not. We went on the very first day at 1 p.m. Um, because you do have to pick up your bib the day before you run. Um, so since I was running the 5k and my mom ran the 5k with me, we had to go on Thursday. So if you're running only the half, you could go on Saturday or Thursday or Friday. So now we're gonna move into the 5K. So the 5K was on Friday morning. It started at five, but you did have to be on the bus by four. So we woke up at 3.15, which apparently is like late. Um, from my research, a lot of people set their alarms for like 2.15, 2.30. Um, if I'm missing something, please leave that in the comments below because I'm not sure why um i know people love to warm up and i did warm up kind of in our room but um yeah i'm just not exactly sure what there is to get up that early for and kind of wait for that long i guess it's some people want to be in their the very front of their corral um but yeah if you could let me know if there's like 
a secret I'm missing out on, please let me know because I am very new to this. Our plan was always to be like leaving our room at 3.30, which we did fine. Um, and we got on the bus to the Epcot parking lot. I am not a morning person at all, like completely. I could run a half marathon at two in the morning if I was like staying up till then, but waking up that early and running it in the morning is not my thing. Um, so I was really worried about that, but the adrenaline and the excitement, I was totally fine. I was never tired, which is kind of amazing to me how your body can just like snap in and snap out of things. Um, Cause like today, if I woke up at 3, 15 in the morning, I'd be exhausted right now. But I was so like, just, oh my gosh, it's that runner's high. We got on the bus to the Epcot parking lot. That's where the start is. And I was in corral four for the for the 5k um i did not submit my time i just like totally forgot uh so that's gonna be a big thing for next time because that i will get into was kind of rough for me so we did the 5k it was so much fun my biggest piece of advice from everyone i talked to a lot of experienced runners was to pace yourself and don't run as fast as you can in a 5k if i wanted to i could have just ran as fast as i can and just finished it but it was my first run Disney race ever and I had my mom there and I knew I had to run a lot more miles after that so I really took my time we really enjoyed it we talked we looked at all the characters we didn't stop for any because the lines in the 5k were insane I'm still not quite grasping how you could wait in line that long and still like finish it by the time the park opens the first line, I think it was like Pocahontas, Moana, and Merida, maybe. Um, the line was, I've, I've never seen a line that long, but the characters are so cool to see. The best one for the 5K, I won't go through like everything I've seen because you can go look that up, but I would say, I'll say my favorite from each race. So I think my favorite um, from the 5K was when we ran by, it was Prince Charming and I forget her name, but one of the mice from Cinderella. And I love the mice from Cinderella because I love Cinderella. Um, and that was really, really cool. And they were in France, so that was really cool. So we finished the 5K. I will show you the medal. The 5K was Cinderella themed. Should have said that. Um, so it was the Cinderella 5K. And it's obviously the 50th. So all of the medals are slightly iridescent. And all the medals on the back say... Um, the most magical celebration with the 50th and it was presented by corksicle this year which we love corksicle <laughs> check the first one off super super fun i remember finishing that and being like i'm so excited for tomorrow after that we did go to some of the parks i felt great i wasn't sore at all because we mainly jogged and walked it um so i felt great i was ready for the 10k i also should mention um before we get into the 10k the 5k where we went was we started at the epcot parking lot we kind of went out and around past test track and we did a full loop around epcot you kind of have to weave in and out because a full loop isn't um long enough so we kind of like weaved back and forth some bit some bits um and then finished back at the finish line which is in the same epcot parking lot now the 10k I was excited for because I was excited to run. I was excited to go longer. So we actually drove that day because we were like, I wonder if it's different to drive. Um, so we decided to drive that day. And it wasn't really any easier or harder, just different. Um, because we had cars, we have our car there, so we're like, why not? I went into the corral. I was corral four, I think. I was three for the 5k because there were more corrals, I think, and then for the 10 and a half, I was corral four. Um, and that really is kind of sucks <laughs> because you're waiting a lot. So I was kind of warm and then you're just kind of standing there and there's kind of space to like stretch cause you're like packed like sardines. So that wasn't great to just like stand there and I was so cold. I'm cold all the time. Like that was not the best. And being in crowd four, um, so they normally do it by pace. So the faster people will be like closer to the front and it gets slower. Um, and I don't want this to come across as me being like, I run so fast because I really don't. And there's people who run way, way faster than me. Um, but trying to run with people who aren't going the same pace as you is dangerous, <laughs> is one dangerous. Um, so you have to be very careful because you could really hurt people um, and vice versa. Like if I'm running with people who are going faster than me, that's not good either. 
So that was kind of hard to maneuver at first, um, but I did get lucky because when my corrals were going off, I was at the very, very front of my heat. So when they went, you know, fireworks go, I was right at the front, which was nice. Um, and I started running and it was like me and like five or six other people were kind of keeping the same pace. And we were like by ourselves for the first, like I would say almost mile of the race. For the first few miles, I felt great. I was running pretty well, a like good pace. Um, and then I definitely got a little tired. I think I started a little strong. Um, I got excited, which is how I run. I get, I start out too fast, like all the time. So I need to work on that. But the 10K, we left Epcot first, and then we kind of were on the highway for a while. And then we went into Hollywood Studios, back to the boardwalk area, um, past Yacht and Beach Club, back into Epcot through World Showcase and to Epcot Parking. So that was the route, which was super fun. I loved um, running through Hollywood Studios. That was really fun. Can't remember like the coolest character I saw. Oh, I think that day might have been Prince Philip and Meriwether. That was really cool. I remember seeing that and being like, whoa, I've never seen. And it was like Meriwether as like, um, like not a face character. So I don't think I've ever seen that before. My last mile was really fast at the 10K because I got a really like, I was like, we're almost there. 10K was super fun. 10K was Tiana themed. The 10K was honestly probably the best race of the weekend for me, like pace wise, enjoyment wise. Um, we were staying at beach club. So my dad just like walked out of our room and got to, he was at mile five and that was really fun. Um, yeah, so the 10K was Tiana and it was super cool because I didn't realize this until I had all of them that they all get a little slightly bigger as you go on. So this was the 10K. I love the gold. And again, obviously the 50th, the lanyard has like pretty flowers. It's green for Tiana. We love Tiana. That night is when it got a little interesting. We were at Hollywood Studios and the side of my foot really started hurting me. And it was a weird pain I've never experienced before. It's not the worst pain in my life, but just different which is always scary to me when it's like a different kind of pain. And it was not fun. It's actually was during the our last video we did, we went to Minnie's um, silver screen dying. It was during that. So if you want to know what my inner monologue was that whole video, it was why the heck does my foot hurt? I have to run a half marathon tomorrow. So I remember being kind of worried about it. And I went home and I, I have compression, compression boots that are these like, they look like space boots. Um, that like compress your legs and help blood flow and I use them like almost every day so I brought those with me so I had those I rolled out I had like um arnica gel on like ice baths packs of ice like I was doing everything to make my foot not hurt fell asleep and woke up the next morning and it really really still hurt and I was like great I have to run 13.1 miles and the night before I I don't get nervous often um for like physical activity I was just never someone who got like nervous or scared. Um, and that was the first time really that I wouldn't even use the word like nervous and scared, but just like anxious, I guess. Cause I just had no idea what to expect. Like I had been training so long. This thought of like running this half marathon has been in my head for so long. And I'm just like, I have no idea what it's going to be like. And I haven't run that far. And the thought that kept going in my head was that what I ran that morning was the 10k, the which is 6.2. I'm like, double that, and it's still not as long as a half marathon. That's the thought that was screwing with me. Um, so don't think that if you're running <laughs> the princess challenge. I was less nervous than I was the night before, but still kind of anxious. We got, got ready, went out the door, and the line for the bus was insane. And we had heard that the first bus came at 2.30, which that's when they start. So the bus came at 2.30 when the it's supposed to start, got people on, and there were some people who didn't fit. So they just were like, the bus will come back. Um, and it was now like 3.50 and a bus had not returned. So people were very angry, which I get. It's early in the morning. That's rough. You're about to run a half marathon. We waited for about an hour, maybe even longer. Uh, before a bus came to take us, we did hear the the race got um, 
delayed about like 20 minutes, but it wasn't just our hotel. It was a lot of different um, hotel areas were having the same issue. So that was like a, not a great start to the day, <laughs> but I was still super excited, still super nervous, but ready to do it. The fireworks went off and I started and my foot hurt so, so bad. It was like the outside of my foot and every time my foot hit the ground was just pain, pain, pain. And I've danced through a lot of pain in my life, um, a lot of injuries. So I was, I was like, there's no way I'm not going to finish this race. Like you will have to drag me off of the course before I stop. So it's like, what's plan B? What can I do? So I started kind of running a different way. There's so many different techniques of running. And that's what I loved about Run Disney was like watching everyone run and how different everyone ran. It's so fascinating to me. So I tried to do some new, like run a different way, striking a different way and just nothing was working. So I just kind of accepted that I was going to be in pain for like the next how many hours of my life. Um, but finishing was more important than that. I knew that I was in pain and I knew something wasn't right, but I knew I wasn't um, like extremely injured. I knew I didn't like break something or strain something or pull something. I knew it was just kind of a weird injury from I think overuse. I knew I could push through it. So I just want to say that, that like, I'm not preaching to like run, even if you're in excruciating pain, like everyone's body's different. Listen to your body. For me, I was in pain, but I knew I could push through. I texted my mom at mile two being like, I'm gonna be a lot slower than I expected, but I'm gonna finish, but it's gonna be slower than expected. Um, and I remember we ran under the Magic Kingdom sign and like the pain went away and I was like, where Magic Kingdom? Tra or the um, course was sort of starting at Epcot, going out all the way to Magic Kingdom parking, going through the parking lot, going past contemporary going into Magic Kingdom, making a whole loop around Magic Kingdom, going out where um, next to Splash where the parades come in, going out there, doing a whole loop back um, through Epcot to the finish. That was the loop. And I remember getting to the Magic Kingdom parking lot and it was like not even mile five and being like, how am I gonna do this? Like this, I have so many more miles to go. Like, how am I gonna do this? But I kept going, kept going, kept going. I was so excited to run in Magic Kingdom. That was that was the highlight of the weekend, was running through Magic Kingdom. They play When You Wish Upon a Star, and it, I mean, the coolest, the coolest, coolest thing ever. Mile five was Magic Kingdom, so I don't even remember mile five, because I was just like, we're in Magic Kingdom. Um, and then mile six was coming out of, was like, right after Magic Kingdom and Corella was there and I love Corella and I didn't stop for her because I didn't want to stop for characters but I remember being like I can do this there's Corella we can do this and then the net the rest of the race was rough I'm not gonna lie it was rough it was really hard um it was on the highway I didn't put ear um my airpods in which rookie mistake I will do better next time so I wasn't listening to anything it was very boring you're just on back roads and then you're on the highway it got really hot. Everyone who's there knows it was unseasonably warm for that one isolated day. Beating, beating in the sun, just really, really hard. I tried not to think of like, when I passed a mile marker, I tried not to be like, well, I have like four more after this or five more after this. I tried to be like, okay, we passed mile seven. Okay, we passed mile eight. Like trying not to think too far ahead was a good mindset to have. There's always a wall you hit depending on no matter what race you're doing. It could be a 10, half a full. It's like the, they call it the wall and you just are exhausted. You feel like you have nothing left, but you still have a good amount of miles to run. So for a half, it's normally around mile eight. And I, it's real, you just hit it. And you're just like, I, I can't run anymore. Like, and but yet you do. It's crazy how your body is like, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this, and yet you do. Your body's so amazing. And mile eight was going up and overpass, so that was just the cherry on top. It was great. And the lines for the characters during the half were like a fraction of what they were for the 5k, because not a lot of people want to stop, I think. So I was in a Mulan shirt because the theme of the five or the ten, the half was Mulan. Um, and Mushu was there, and you never see Mushu. And there was no line. I think I stopped for a total of 30 seconds um, from like start to finish. 
and I ran over and I was like, I have to get a picture. So I got a quick picture with Mushu and I kept running. Yeah, maybe this is TMI, but like, I don't really care. I had to pee twice. Um, I have a very small bladder and um, I didn't have to stop for the 10K, but for the half, I'm like, I know I'm gonna have to stop. One of the reasons I had to pee was because we waited for the bus for so long and then we had to like run to our corral. So I didn't have to pee before, I didn't get to pee before. Um, so that also added some unnecessary time, but you gotta do what you gotta do. I remember getting to mile 12 and being like, I I'm so close. Like I have one more mile, like, or maybe it was mile even 11. I think it was not even 12. I think it was either like, I think it was 11 and being like, I'm so close. Like, oh, oh my gosh. It just like, it hit me that I'm like, wait, I've been running for so, so long. And yet that doesn't even, it, it goes away. You're just like, wait, I, I can do this. So you're kind of backstage at Epcot during that time. And I just got the biggest second wind. And I, you can see in the video, like I get, I'm so, I'm like, there's one more mile left. Like, oh my gosh, we're, we're, we're finished. Like this is, this is it. And I, I would, I didn't know if I was going to cry or not. I, I get emotional thinking back to it in the moment. I didn't want to cry in the moment. I was like filled with so much joy. Um, because when you're turning that corner to go backstage to then go into the parking lot, um, there were so many cast members there and it was really cute because a lot of the cast members were like, you're actually almost there because so many times during the race, there's either volunteers or spectators or cast members being like, you got it, you're almost there. And like, you're not almost there at all. But it was really funny because it was like, we had like a mile left, like maybe if that. And they were like, you're like, you're literally almost there. Like you're, you're actually almost there. I remember turning that corner and they're like, it's just around the corner. You're so, so close. And it's like, we did it. Like it, it was like seeing that mile 13 marker was the best feeling in the world. Like, I wish I could just relive that like 30 seconds of like turning the corner and seeing the mile 13 with the finish line in the background. Like that is it. You just work so, so hard. Like running is so, so hard. And I did not even realize how hard it was going to be until I did it. And like, it's hard. And anyone who runs, like, you're so amazing. It's so, so hard. And you need to give yourself so much credit because that is not easy. And everyone's cheering and yelling and has cowbells and it, it was best. And then I remember crossing the finish line and just like my body was done absolutely done I could not walk I after the after you get done it's really nice they had um it was only for the half um I think because it was so hot and we ran so long they had they gave us cooling towels um so they handed us that and then for all the races you get water um right after and I remember like grabbing the towel and grabbing it and being like okay thank you but like I, I really cannot walk and you meet with your the spectators so I met with my mom and I saw her, but they're not allowed to cross a line. And like, I remember just being like, they're so far away. Like, how am I gonna walk that far? And I met with my mom and I think the first thing I said was like, I just need to sit down. <laughs> like, I just need to, I just need five seconds to like sit. Like that sitting was the best feeling. I'll never forget that feeling of sitting down after that half marathon. Um, but I, so they put, hand you your medal right after the finish line. I don't know if I said that before. So, this I think is my favorite of the whole weekend. It's the Mulan 13.1. Look at that. And it's a spinner. Wait, let me do this better. It's a spinner. Look at that. So the back obviously has the 50th and the front is Mulan with 13.1. I am losing my voice because I've been talking so much. Oh my goodness. So you put on that and then for the half, it said um, like challenge, risk, challenge members or something. I don't know. But if you did the 10 and the half, you get the fairy tale challenge medal because you completed the fairy tale challenge, which is was Moana this year, which we love Moana and the flower spin, which are so cool. I think three of them do or two of them. Oh, these three. And obviously the 50th. Look at like the 5K for size reference. Look at how small this is compared to the challenge. Is that crazy? I didn't expect that. So that was, that was the races. And I was in a lot of pain after, like I had never experienced the bottoms of my feet being so swollen um, and just like puffy and 
that I just really could not walk. Um, for me, it was my feet. My knees were fine. My hips were kind of sore, but they were fine. Um, it was my feet were rough for a good week and a half, almost two weeks. And still today, it's been a month, and still my left side is just not happy with me because I compensated so much because my right side was in pain during the half. I was running um, not balanced. So I'm still dealing with that. So <laughs> that's been following me since. I also want to say my favorite character from the half marathon was Sebastian and Ariel. They were um, right outside of Journey. Um, of the Little Mermaid attraction and I had never seen Sebastian ever and that was really really cool so that was definitely my favorite character for the t for the half. That was my completed talk about my experience running the Run Disney races. I am I am and like horse I've been talking for so long. It was so much fun. I signed up yesterday or two days ago now for um wine and dine 2022 so I hope to see you there. I'm so excited to run another another Disney race 17,000 people ran the half marathon It was amazing how well run it is like it's Disney of course it is but like The efficiency to handle an event like that. I feel like people don't Give that enough credit of how amazing it is that they can pull off an event like that um, It's mind-boggling so that was incredible just to see how well run it is and how organized it is. So many amazing volunteers throughout all the courses. They had water stops, they had Powerade. For the half, they had food, um, first aid, um, um, like just amazing, amazing volunteers. The cast members cheering you on, the characters, like it really is just the most magical experience. and. You just have to do it once in your life. Even if it's the, if the it's the 5K. If you're someone who like, I hate running, don't run. You don't have to. Just walk the 5K and just experience like the sense of community. And that's what I want to end on is um, how inspiring it was. And I don't think I was expecting it to be inspiring. Um, I don't know why, but seeing the age range, the skill range, but everyone doing it and like, that's what it's about. They shoot off confetti for the winner of the first person to cross the finish line and the last person to cross the finish line. And like, that's a perfect example of what it's about. It's, yes, winning it is amazing. And the people who win marathons and run Disney races are incredible athletes and should be acknowledged for that. But at the core, it's about yourself and it's about running for you. and. And looking around and seeing all these incredible people pushing themselves and getting out of their comfort zones and like you're running a half marathon at like four in the morning like that is amazing and they have photo pass photographers all throughout the courses and then you put in your bib number on my Disney experience and they all come up so I'll try to insert some of the finish line photos here because those are so great to have I want to leave you on one story that I saw because I can get in my head as someone who physical activity is kind of their job and, and their living and what they do. Um, I can get very hard on myself and if I don't perform well, not even dance wise, I just mean like physical wise, if I have like a workout one day that's like not what it was the day before, I get very hard on myself and very like, well, you should be doing better, you should be doing this. And um, that's something I need to work on and I have gotten a lot better at that. But this race has really opened my eyes to like just doing it is good enough and like just getting out there and pushing yourself to your potential is enough and to not compare yourself to anyone and just doing it for you i passed by this woman who was a few actually um but i passed by this woman in the half marathon and she had a shirt on that said that she had just gotten hip surgery last month and it said dead last is better than did not finish. And that quote, I feel like I have to think about in every race, like, cause it's true. You can be the last one across the finish line. And honestly, I want to be the last one cause I want to get confetti thrown um, as I cross the finish line. So inspiring. I cannot wait to go back. November is um, wine and dine and I will be there. I'm so excited to, I'm doing the five and the 10 and a half and it'll be a great precursor to Dopey. 
in January. Um, I'm so excited. They announced the themes and it's Coco, Raya, Soul, and then Genie is the challenge. If you don't know, Genie is like, it's like everything to me. So getting that challenge medal is what's going to get me through the weekend. So with that being said, leave in the comments below if you've ever run, run Disney. Um, if you, if you have any tips for run Disney, cause I, like I said, I'm very new to this and I don't know a lot of like the inside scoop. So please let me know. Um, I'm so excited to read your comments. If you've made it this far, thank you for listening to me talk to you for so long. Um, I had so much fun telling you all about it. And yeah, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Kara will see you in the next video too. I, I guess I should have said that. Kara hates running and like I literally signed her up for the 5k and she was like, absolutely not. Um, so that's why she's not here with me. I ran it by myself. So if you're confused, but Kara will be in the next video, I'm sure, whatever that may be. So thank you guys for watching. We love you so, so much. And I will see you in the next one.